Today, let's take a look at the latest addition to my vintage analog camera collection, the Zorki 4, 50, maybe even 60 years old Russian analog rangefinder camera, which in the days was kind of popular because they manufactured more than 1.7 million units of this camera model. I got it for 20 bucks and it's even working. Let's begin with the basics. The Zorki 4 is fully manual rangefinder camera. It has no built-in light meter. You're either supposed to get yourself external one and attach it to the hot shoe or just use the standard exposition table. You know, this kind of scene with this kind of lightning condition, set time to this, set aperture to that, and you should be golden. In the back we get the viewfinder and the serial number, and almost all of the controls are located on the top of the camera. This knob over here is used to wind the film back into its spool. You just pull it up and you are able to wind the film. Of course, first you have to release the lock and the loading mechanism over here by lowering this knob and turning this knob over here close to the shutter maximum to the left. In the normal operation this should be maximum to the right and this one should be lowered down. This lever over here adjusts the diopter correction on the viewfinder. The knob on the right is used to advance the film and cock the shutter. Yes, I know, the lever under your thumb is much more convenient way of doing that, but the knob also will get the job done. So just rotate it to the right until you will feel the stop and the film was advanced one frame and also the shutter has been cocked. Now you have two options, either you release the shutter using this button or set the shutter speed. This is important. In case of the Zorki rangefinder cameras, you are not supposed to change the shutter position when the film is not advanced because you might damage the mechanism. So after cocking the shutter and advancing the film, if you pull this knob up, you can rotate it and set it to the new shutter speed. The shutter itself goes from bulb to 130 seconds, which is also synchronized with the lamp. Here is you're supposed to connect the lamp with the wire. You have half a second, one fourth of the second, and goes up to 1000 of the second. And then when the shutter is set, then just press the shutter button. In the front of the camera you get the lens and some additional controls. First of all, let's talk about the lens. The lens on this unit is Industar 50mm. They were also making Zorking and shipping Zorkis with different lenses, but this is one of the most popular. Yes, I know, this lens absolutely seen better days and it's heavily worn. You see the coating on the lens is over here is almost gone. The focus ring is barely moving. I think I will have to just open the lens and clean everything with the sonic cleaner, but definitely not today. You get the wrench scale. Luckily, you do not really have to set the wrench manually because there is a wrench finder. We're gonna talk about the wrench finder in the minute. In the meantime, hit the like button and write in the comments if you had, have or want to have an interesting vintage analog camera. Let's have a nice conversation on this topic. And the ring over here that allows you to set the aperture from f by three and a half to f by 16. And one extra control, which is the timer. When you want to make the picture with the timer, you just have to cock this lever, which winds the ratchet inside, set up everything, set up exposure, set up focus, cock the shutter manually, and then just press this button. And a few seconds later, the picture should be made. And something I mentioned previously, the socket to install the external flashlight. But okay, the most interesting part of every rangefinder camera is most probably the rangefinder itself. This window over here is only the viewfinder. 
viewfinder. You see through it and you see more or less where the camera is point. However, with the help of this smaller window and the small prism inside, there is additional image visible to you in the middle of the screen, which you can use to correctly set the distance on the lens. When the image from the outside covers with the image from the inside, that means you are in focus. Or at least theoretically you should be in focus because well depending on the quality of the build and the lens itself it can be sometimes problematic. How it's working? Quite simple. Let me unscrew the lens and first let's take a look at the lens itself. When I'm moving the focus ring on the lens you see that the back part, the rear part of the lens is moving in and out. If I move it closer the lens, this part, the ring advances inside, when I screw it out it goes inside. And then in the camera itself there is this level, this surface to which this ring over here impinged. When the ring is moving inside to the body then it presses on this lever, this moves the prism inside of the wrench finder and thus gives you a confirmation if in theory you are in focus or really not. You do not really see what the lens sees and you do not really see how the focus is set through the lens. You only see the approximation of more or less where the focus should be. Not really the most convenient way of setting the focus but definitely better than just having to guess and set it manually using the focus ring on the lens. But of course highly inferior comparing to the more modern SLR our cameras that went after it when you just have the through the lens confirmation if the subject is in focus or not. And the part of the viewfinder inside where the view from this second viewfinder is casted to is relatively small and in some cases is just really super hard to match the position of both of the images. Now let's go to the operations. In this model you can remove the whole rear section of the camera by moving those two thumb screws and rotating them in this orientation. Then everything goes out, the cover is disconnected, you get here when you can install the new spool of a film, take it from the spool, attach this to the receiver spool over here, make sure it's attached to the cockwheel over here and you are golden. Then when you will advance the film and cock the shutter, you see the shutter is vertical and moved, the one frame of the film was moved to the receiver spool and when you press the release button, done. Not sure how much of the shutter release you saw because it was set to 1 500th of the second, so let me move the shutter to something more observable. One second and let's release it one more time. You see? It's working. To unload the film from the Zorki 4 you were supposed to A. Turn this knob maximum to the right to unlock the film advance, get the lever out on the left side and just wind it back until you will feel that it disconnected from the receiver spool over here. When this was done you were able to open the rear of the camera like this, take the spool of the film and get it developed. The procedure of making pictures with the Zorki 4 is first wind the film with the right knob, then use the shutter knob to set the desired shutter, use the aperture ring on the lens to set the desired shutter, point the camera at your target, use the focus ring to set the focus by aligning two images in the viewfinder and then press the release button. And you know what? 50 years ago this is was how people were making pictures with almost the pocket size cameras. As a bonus together with the camera I got this leather pouch and the strap for it, which kinda nicely protect the camera from all the possible damage. You just take the camera, put it 
Inside, you see, you still have access to the lever that coats the release timer, attach the enclosure with the screw that just impinges of the tripod hole on the bottom, and you are ready to go making pictures with your brand new, amazing, fantastic Zorki 4 rangefinder camera. Here's the next video you should watch. In the meantime, I'm Paweł Spychalski. Thank you very much for watching and like always, happy filming!